talk about willingness, I could talk about readiness, I could talk about mastery. It's great to celebrate the willingness. Just have a party with the willingness. Have a party with the little willingness. If you find yourself a little willing for the moment during the day, you can really celebrate that little willingness. You don't even have to think about readiness or mastery because the readiness will be there when, when it's there. It's something that goes beyond time and space, so it's not like, you know, people will say, how can I increase my readiness? Hmm. You're really, you're ready or you're not. <laughs> uh, it's not something that you can just kind of do exercises or whatever. <laughs> I'm going to increase my readiness for God, you know. That's, if you start to see it's pretty laughable, but but willingness is something that you can kind of, you can bring it to the table, and you can bring it to the table. And then when you're tempted to get frustrated or doubtful or sad or any of those temptations, you can bring some willingness in there. You know, you can keep bringing it and bringing it and bringing it and bringing it. And it's really wonderful, so I think willingness is something to celebrate. Readiness is a whole different thing. You can be really, really willing and not ready. And, and don't be frustrated if you're willing and not ready. Because when you're not ready, you're not ready. Uh, you, you can't uh, close down on yourself and judge yourself for that. Uh, we, we don't do that with children when children are learning how to walk. You know, when they, the toddlers are taking their first step, we don't scold them when they fall down to their knees, we scoop them up and we say, oh, we scoop them up and we scoop them up again and we scoop them up again, we keep scooping them up. We don't scold them and say, you are not ready to walk. <laughs> you know, it, that's not encouraging. So we, sh we should be just as kind as we would be with a, a toddler with our self, with our mind training. And then mastery is when you're willing, 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 and, and, and you are ready, then you're still not at mastery. Some of you might have seen Way of the Peaceful Warrior, you know, with Socrates and Dan Millman. Uh, he goes through a lot. And it's not till, you might say, towards the end of the movie that he starts to have some experiences of mastery uh, when he's on the, the rings. You know, you know, where are you? Here, now. You know, he, he, Socrates' voice is really loud in his mind. He's, oh, he's immersing in the mastery and the announcers are going crazy and he's He's up there and his, it's, you might say it's reflecting in his performance, so to speak, where he's so at ease that it's just the spirit flowing through him. But that's mastery. And again, you know, that's something you shouldn't use that as, as a comparison device ever because that makes it personal. And this is about letting go of the personal. And, and mastery comes only through letting go of the personal. Of, of seeing this, you can't take anything personal, including enlightenment. If you believe enlightenment will be a personal accomplishment that you'll be able to notch on your belt, uh, oh my, <laughs> that's it's going to be a disillusionment because there, there really aren't enlightened persons. That would be like having an enlightened mask, and there aren't any enlightened masks. So it's good. You can start to see that's another one you can give up. You can quit comparing yourself to enlightened masters or enlightened beings because there aren't any. <laughs> that's a good reason to stop. <laughs>